about this because I was reading in, uh, on Century um, in their magazine and they had a, uh, a poll on how many students schools have. So I saw they, that. I got that copy in the mail too and I saw that you had, I was interested, I saw that. So I knew what you were talking about with that. Yeah, because it's talking about um, only 8% of the schools have over 200, which I find really hard to believe because um, I do a lot with schools that have more than that. And they were saying that most of them are around 50 or under 50. And uh, I don't even know how you compare your rent with that. So I decided. I don't think so. You know, I, I don't either. So I don't know what those guys are doing. No, I had a guy called me the other day. Super good conversation. I go, you're driving? He goes, yeah, I Uber during the day. You know, I drive Uber during the day and run my school at night. Plus my wife works too. And I go, man, that's no way to do something you really love. You got to figure out how you're going to make a living on that. So, or you might as well just say, hey, I'm going to do martial arts as a hobby and just go train at someone else's school and get a full time job. Get a full -time job. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's not a, yeah, that's that was, I was surprised. Um, not, you know, who knows, but I, I don't know. You would know more, better than everybody if they're, um, did I lose you? No, nope, I'm still here. Okay. If their data is usually pretty accurate. Yeah, that's or, something too. Who's going to respond that? I know a lot of the, the bigger schools don't spend much time online and things like that. So would they even respond? Probably not. You know, but then Sentry should have more data because they deal with the schools on their shipments and what they buy. So I don't know if it's just people responding to a survey or just from their database on how many things people buy in their estimate. Right. Because think about it, I think like, okay, how does a company like Mark Century, who's got, you know, a couple major competitors, thing like that, if they're only selling to schools for, you know, less than, you know, 50 members, uh, no. that's not a big volume, you know, that's, that's not, they gotta sell to, no, it does not work. Yeah, sell a lot of uniforms to try and keep that, send out, you know, catalogs and all. So I, whatever, but either way, it's thought provoking. Yeah, but a, a lot of people do respond on Rainmaker and things like that, that they sign three people up, five people up. And so there's got to be some type of marketing. It's funny when you first open a business, you do all kinds of marketing because you want to get it off the ground. You've got to pay your rent. So you go knock on the door some business owners. Uh, you do some demonstrations, you're doing that, you have an open house, you're having guest days, and then all of a sudden you start doing pretty good and you start working more in your school and less on the business of the school and you plateau or you know, go backwards. Morning, Johnny. Is that your marketing bucket, Dave? It is. It is. <laughs> no, I talk about everyone should have a marketing bucket on their desk. You go, what's that? I go, if you're doing all your marketing, start thinking, okay, I'm going to put a piece of paper in there for all the marketing. How much is my bucket going to fill up? <laughs> and it seems like some people have a lot of marketing things one month and nothing the next month. So what we lose is consistency. Started making a uh, um, a little page here. Want to share it? So again, with the marketing bucket, this is what we're doing on a regular basis. Some people call this marketing pillars, um, strategies, all kinds of names. But is basically what do we do on a monthly basis to make sure we're getting new students? And a lot of people do different things. One thing that I found out is there's nothing really as a silver bullet for martial arts that's going to give us a ton of new students, but there's a lot of efforts we can do to get two to three new students per month. So how many things have to be in your marketing bucket? I would say minimum five. Um, if you can get up to eight or ten, that's even better. Paul Garcia and I agreed on this for a long time that if I do something for marketing and I get two students, and I want to get 20 per month, I've got to be doing at least 10 things. Well, maybe some doesn't give you any, maybe someone's going to give you four, but that would give you a good idea. And then it's consistency. When we used to call it marketing pillars, 
I told everyone, kind of picture your school as the roof of a, like the Parthenon in Greece. And they got these huge pillars that are holding up the roof. Well, most people's pillars are just tiny little two by fours. And it's not something really, really strong. So one of the things that makes them really strong is consistency. Let's just take an example of birthday parties. A fall school owner, if you do birthday parties, hey, we did one a couple weeks ago. It was really, really good. When did you do one before that? I don't know, but it was recent. So they're doing birthday parties, but it's not consistent. So if I was going to think of how can I make this a pillar, how can I make it consistent, well, I've got to have some type of system that's going to give me people taking birthday parties, either my students or just people in the general public. I have to have a process of marketing a plan to get that done. It could be using Rainmaker, using the flows and 90 days out saying, hey, I see you have a birthday coming up. Do you know we do birthday parties? Um, there's a letter inside the vault. It's, it starts off, if you think you're just one in class, you should see them at a birthday party. Those are great letters. Those can be done uh, automatically through Rainmaker. Um, when you start thinking about how many people should be having a birthday each week, think of how many students you have. So if you have 150 students, divide that by 52, for 52 weeks in a year, you come with three students per week that are having a birthday. That should give you enough prospects so you're gonna get maybe at least three total doing birthday parties at your school, so that leaves you one week open. That one week open could be the birthday page that's marking your birthday parties on your website. Now you got a mom going in looking for things to do for birthday parties, and all of a sudden your website comes up. Maybe you have that uh, as a special coupon. You're doing a coupon online, and you're doing birthday parties. Uh, that'd be another way to market it. Uh, Tom Baker does something really neat. He just puts a banner up in school this time of year, now um, registering birthday parties for 2020. So people just see that banner. That's another way to do birthday parties. Having a birthday party bulletin board, or if you have a big screen TV, and showing pictures of kids whose birthday is coming up, wishing them a happy birthday. At the same time, maybe having a uh, tracker on the bottom of the screen goes to find out for information about our awesome birthday parties, please see someone at the front counter. So now we're taking one marketing idea. We say, okay, how we're gonna be consistent. Well, how we're gonna become consistent is to have a system for marketing. I was talking to Charles, Charles Darnigan today, and he goes, I'm not getting enough uh, talking to parents about birthdays, and I just don't have time to call them. I go, well, I would give your front end person a list of everyone's having birthdays this coming month or next month, whatever you want to do, how you, know, you want to prioritize it. And then as these people come in, the front end person's going to just recognize them. So, okay, this person is having a birthday this month or next month. I'm going to talk to them. And you just mentioned, I see that your daughter has a party coming up, a birthday coming up. Uh, how old she going to be? Uh, she going to be 10? <laughs> That's an awesome age. It's also an awesome age for a karate birthday party. Uh, we do something special for the girls who have birthday parties here. We do the, whatever you're going to, your, uh, your speech is on talking to these people. Now you're going to approach them person to person. So now you've got your letters going out. Um, you've got your flows. You've got the pictures on the TV. If you don't have a TV, you just put a bulletin board up. On the bulletin board, you have pictures of, say, happy birthday to these students. Put a picture of each student. And on the bottom of that, you just say, we do birthday parties, please see us. Or you have a trifold. That's another way. Having a nice trifold on your front counter, just in a holder. Um, so people can just pick up that and talks about your birthday parties. Maybe it lists all three parties you do. We have a basic party where the instructor teaches a class, and you bring your own cake, and you bring your own food. We let you use our space. You do all the work yourself, and that's maybe – $99. So you're not doing any work except a 30-minute class and a little game. The parents are doing everything else. Your standard birthday party could be $250. This includes uh, games. It includes you setting up the table. Kids have a party. Kids cut the cake with a sword. Um, they get to choose what type of things they're going to have on the table, any type of theme. Maybe this could be a ninja birthday party. Uh, so that would be a more expensive party. 
And then you could have your ultimate party, which could be $4.99. Uh, the kids get uh, uniforms. They get a free month of classes. Uh, they get to party. They get to games. Uh, they get everything. The birthday party boy or girl gets to take away the sword. So now you have a trifold on your counter, so that's another way of marking it. So just there, just kind of thinking on my own, that's five or six different ways you can market birthday parties. When I had my school, we had a um, appointment schedule, and I would look at the appointment schedule every single Monday to see what the weekend looks like, because um, we actually tried to do four birthday parties in my school down in Florida. We did two on Saturday and two on Sunday. I will look at the schedule. How are we doing? Well, we've got three parties. Well, we need four, so let's create a party. Let's have a contest in class. And we say, I'm going to choose the 10 most enthusiastic students today, and I'm going to give you something really, really special this weekend. And so now you have some friendly competition in class. Um, you vote, you find out 10 kids, and you tell those 10 kids they're invited to a pizza party. And the cool thing about this pizza party is they can bring three to five of their friends. So within one class, you created another event on the weekend. Uh, my school at that time probably had 600 students. So when you have 600 students, you have like 30 people per week or per month that are having birthday parties. Uh, so you're overloaded with prospects. I know Brandon Belizo in uh, California, his goal is also for a weekend. Uh, he gets, uh, I think, $500 per party, so he's making $2,000 a weekend just doing parties. So now as he's doing parties for marketing, this has become an income generator. Same thing with my school in Florida. Just by doing birthday parties, you're doing $120,000 per year. I mean, that's huge income besides your martial arts school. So that's one thing in the bucket. So the one thing in the book is the birthday party, but the most important thing is the consistency in the details in the marketing. Next thing, I would try to set 60 to 90 minutes per day where I'm gonna either do it myself or I'm gonna train a staff. I started thinking when I was writing this today, Doug Bertrand's a friend of mine, he's got a school in Vancouver, Washington. If I call him up at 10 o'clock in the morning, his office is pretty big. He's got five desks in his office. Five people are sitting behind the desk. They're all doing outgoing phone calls. Now, with his two schools, he has probably about 1,400, 1,500 students. Uh, so he's got a lot of calls, but these people are all doing different things. One's doing outgoing calls to leads. So from his website, leads that he got in yesterday, someone's just calling them. Someone's calling for reminders. All the students that have um, made appointments or reminding them to make sure they come in. He's got someone doing birthday party calls. He doesn't do it where people come in the, the, the actually the school and the front end office person talks to them. Then. He's doing outgoing calls to birthday parties. He's calling old prospects. So now someone came in, they tried a class. Uh, you haven't heard them for 60 days. Uh, they're getting the, the flows, but you're also calling them Inviting that back in, maybe you have some type of special now, your spring special, which is six weeks for $99. So you're going to see if price is one of the things that will drive these people in and making an appointment. You may be calling former students, just calling former students, uh, checking in on them, see if they're everything about coming back to martial arts. Also, one guy goes, yeah, you know, I kind of think I, I'll be there. I don't know, but it'll be soon. Hey, why don't you come in right now? If you come start right now, I'm going to give you your first month absolutely free, and then you can start paying next month. So if you have a small school, you've got 100, 50 to 150 students, one person, 90 minutes, can probably do all these phone calls. But as you get more and more students, you have to get more people coming in earlier to make these calls. Again, Doug's got a big school, but again, first thing in the morning, his desks are, are packed. People that work like a, a, a early shift at a school and a late shift, they have afternoons off. You know, mornings the time he's doing these phone calls. Uh, now, when you're calling leads, the important thing when you're calling leads is starting to build trust and start building relationship. It's not, hey, I saw you got uh, interested in our website. I'm just calling you to see if there's anything you want to do about scheduling. No, you want to make it more person, uh, personable. This is a personality-driven business. So you're calling the person, thanking them for visiting your website. 
Yeah, I just want to know, are these classes a few for someone else? What's for my son? How old your son? Has he ever taken martial arts before? Start a conversation. Show that you have interest. You're not just interested in getting them into trying a class. You're interested in them and what they're looking for. Once you understand what they're looking for, now you invite them to come in. You know, I think the best thing is for you to bring your son down. I love to meet David. Uh, you and David can take a look at the school if you want to watch class. That'd be great. I'd really like you know, to try a class so David can actually experience it. This way he can meet both myself, the other instructors, and some of the students. I'll introduce you to some of the parents. Uh, you can ask me questions, ask the parents questions. We'll make sure it's a good fit for you. So that would be a good script for the, uh, the leads. Reminders is the kind of same thing. You're calling as a reminder. Maybe the lead call was done by your program director. Now the reminder, I have someone coming in this afternoon and I call, hey, uh, Mr. Stevens, Greg Silva, I'm going to be your instructor this afternoon. And I just want to call and introduce myself. Uh, how are you doing today? He goes, oh, really good. Hey, I'm really looking forward to meeting you today. Um, is there anything special you're looking to get out of martial arts? Is this for physical fitness? Uh, you know, what's your goal? Now he starts uh, talking about it. Say, well, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Uh, if you can arrive five to ten minutes early, that would be great. Just want to shake your hands, introduce you to some of the people, and I want to make sure we get started on time. So all these outgoing calls should have good scripts. Those scripts that I just did, I just made up on the spot. But the whole idea is I know the process. I know the process is showing interest in the other person. People don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So all these calls start with, I care about you. I want to make sure this is the right school. Learning about that, building trust, talking to them, answering questions, and then invite them to come down. Same thing with the reminders. During that reminder, I want that person to feel obligated to come see me. I just called, introduced myself, asked him all these questions. I want him to have an obligation. I'm not going to let this guy down. This guy's a super nice guy on the phone. I'm going to make sure I show up for that class. Uh, birthday party calls. If I was doing a birthday, I'd want to make sure that, hey, I was just talking to the instructor, and the instructor, um, uh, met Master Hawk, was saying that your son's got a birthday coming up, and It'd be really cool if we can make this birthday party the best one he's ever had. Master Hawk and I had a couple ideas. Have you made plans for your child's birthday yet? So again, same thing. I'm interested in them. How could I make this birthday party the best your child's ever had? So when you start thinking of these things, it's all about them. It's all about them. It's all about them. You're building rapport. You're building trust. And now make the appointment. Websites. You know, a lot of people get some good websites. Uh, there's a lot of companies that do real good websites. The challenge is, it's like a lot of people have good karate schools. A lot of people have good locations. But unless you promote traffic to your location or promote traffic to your website, it's doing you absolutely no good. Um, I know uh, Dave is working with a 97 display. Charles is working with 97 display. They seem to be pretty good. Um, the person who does Paul Garcia's website, it's called Seeds Marketing. They do a phenomenal job. They do a real uh, lot with videos. Um, they're really, really kind of specialized into the Krav Maga. But they're really good at promoting people to visit your website. I was talking to Charles this morning uh, just before this meeting. I think he had like eight or 10 leads from the weekend. I uh, had more yesterday. So he's already started this week strong with his outgoing phone calls. So website is good. Getting people to your website is totally different. In addition to doing Facebook advertising and things like that, I, that's good. Uh, I just moved into a new house. I've hired quite a few people to work in my house. Uh, it's funny because when I Googled that type of thing, I was looking for someone who, um, was doing flooring, so Google flooring, and then I see an ad on, and so it's a flooring company near me, I can see it says ad, well that person's buying Google AdWords. So he's bidding that if I do flooring West Palm Beach, that his ad's gonna be on the top of the Google search. And so people may say I'm gonna bid 
15 cents to get up there. Someone's saying a bit of dollar. The high bidder gets the top one. I, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know if I'm lazy, but I start with the top one and then I call them. So you got to make sure you're doing those Google AdWords. But these are all ways to get more people to your website. I still think doing business to business relationships where you're putting ad cards or rack cards in different businesses is great. I think it's twofold. One, it's offline marketing for online results. So everything that I have print has my website on it. My school's got the website on it. Um, my t-shirt doesn't have the website on it, but everything else does. So that's offline marketing for online results. Uh, they really work at the same time while you're promoting your rack cards. It's your opportunity to meet different business owners. So if I'm going into a store and it's a, maybe it's, it's a, a breakfast restaurant and I'm talking to the person, I ask them if I can put one of my rack card locations or a, a rack card racks in their location. And they go, yeah, that'd be no problem. I go, you know, that's our goal to really keep kids safe in our community. And we're just looking for other businesses to partner up that also want to kids, uh, keep kids safe. So this is a rack card. It got kid safety tip for summer on one side. It's got an advertisement for our school on the other. Yeah, I go, hey, thanks very much. Hey, I'd like to do something for uh, you because you let us do that. How many employees do you have? And the guy goes, oh, we got 16 employees. Great. 16 free guest passes for VIP memberships. I'm going to give them to the owner. I go, these uh, passes are good for a month of martial arts classes. It's a uniform. It's got total value of $150. I give you one for each of your employees. If you need more, that's great. If your employee doesn't want to use it, they want to give it to a family member, that's fine too. Uh, but, you know, we find that this is we work with and they say that their people are exercising or doing some type of training. They have more energy. They're happier people. So uh, just for uh, helping us out, I want to do this for you. So I've done a lot of things there. You know, that's one way I'm promoting people to my website. It's one way you're just getting information. So now I have 100 businesses. So I have 100 mini billboards all around town. I've introduced myself to 100 business owners. I invited all their people into my school for a month. Some will, some won't. But at least uh, I got my name out there. I'll probably go back another time and maybe invite them. I know uh, Dave uh, Prita did uh, something that was really cool a couple weeks ago. He actually had a lender for real estate use his school and invite all the real estate agents in town and they got a class and they got some food and so now they're all on Dave's mat Dave's teaching the class the other guy got everyone there so you can ask different people in your area the different businesses if they would like to do that one time in um, my school in Arizona I went to a day spa and the day spa like to do staff meetings and they want to do staff meetings who are like team building I go, we can easily do a team building martial arts class for you. So they held their business meeting at my martial arts school. It was early in the morning. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they had their meeting. Then I did some team building. They had a lot of fun. Everyone was laughing, just what the people wanted. But now I've got all these people from the spa. They're all women. Gave them all uh, self-defense uh, class uh, passes. I gave them all passes for their kids to come in and try my martial arts school. So that one idea stemmed from driving people to your website. So you drive your people to your website, you've got your Google, uh, you've got your retargeting, you've got Facebook, you've got offline marketing, you've got business to business, all involved in that one promotion. And now with consistency and it's massive action. It's not just a website, but you just took massive action on the website. Just like the outgoing phone calls, we took massive action. We did leads, we did reminders, we did birthday parties, old prospects, former students. You know, that's consistency and massive action. One last one because I'm running out of time today, but the 515. The 515 is old school. 515 means by the 15th of the month, we have five ideas for the following month. Because every month has something special. Like next month is St. Patrick's Day. I want to thank Johnny Karate for this one. Uh, he had the idea of giving gold coins because it's St. Patrick's Day, gold coins, giving gold coins to all the kids when they come in for class. Simple. 
Um, now the kids are getting something, but they actually get to use those coins. You go on to like uh, Party City or you go on to orientaltradingcompany.com and you just buy some toys. And you set up a little store within the martial arts school and kids can come in and for two coins, maybe they can buy a finger puppet. Two coins, they can do this. If they have uh, 15 coins, they can get a t-shirt. So now you've got a little store in your school. You just make it interesting. Now the kids are coming to class. Now that's all about retention. If the kids come every day for a single month, they're gonna see some progress. When they see the progress, they're gonna uh, feel good about themselves and they're gonna have consistency in their training. Just by the incentive, kids love stuff like that. It's like going to um, an arcade and getting all kinds of tickets and going up and trading those tickets in for some type of prize. So that's one idea for the 515 for March. Um, so there's other things you can do. You know, March again is uh, beginning of spring. At the same time, it's National Nutrition Month. So in March, I'm going to do something for my adults in nutrition. I'm going to go to a GNC store in my town or some type of nutrition store. I'm going to tell the people there, hey, I've got a martial arts school, and we have about 50 adults. I like to have all my adults to come to class and learn about nutrition. Because everyone's asked me about the different diet, diets, TV diets, and things like that. I don't have, like to have an expert come in explaining that. That's a question and answer. I'm sure you can get some people to buy some supplements. Now you've got a reason for all your adults to come back in. It's not all about getting new students, but it is on getting new students. Because when you do something like that, your school is remarkable. When I say remarkable, there's things for people to remark about your school. Hey, I just learned something about the keto diet. Now the person's going to work. You know what I found out about keto? This is how fast I'm going to lose weight. It sounds a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. But people are going to talk about that event to non-martial artists. Now the non-martial artists are going to learn about your school. So the 515, I try to do this meeting for Rainmakers every single month around the 15th. But I come up with at least five ideas that are unique for the next month. So I know that's not consistency by doing the same thing, but it's consistency because I have five ideas that are gonna make my school fun, classes are gonna be interesting, kids are gonna feel good about themselves, there's gonna be a reason for people to talk about my school, there's gonna be a reason for people to bring friends into the school. So this is part one, again, the marketing bucket, I think we put a couple things in there. I know I did a lot of talking. That's only a few things. So we're going to talk about more. Uh, we're going to talk more about internal uh, events. We're going to talk more about promotional booths. Um, I wish there was one thing that got you a lot, a lot of students. It would make it really, really easy. But the whole idea is if we want to grow. And that century list, going back to that, got me really upset. You know, 8% of schools having 200 students. It shouldn't be like that. Everyone should be growing to 200 students. I really don't think a school gets interesting to you get to 125 to 150 students. Now you've got people in your classroom. It makes it exciting. I couldn't imagine uh, teaching with 50 students, figuring that 25 people are going to come a day over five classes, and you have five people per class. I know it's fun teaching martial arts, but it's really fun when you have 20 to 25 kids really having the energy in the class, 25 adults per class, class after class throughout the day. Now you're making an impact. So let's get these, this marketing down. Take these ideas. I hope you jot some down, some notes. If not, I did have make a recording of this. I'll put the recording down uh, on the uh, Rainmaker Business Solution today. In fact, uh, not down, but I'll upload it. Any comments or anything? Okay. I know there's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> All right, guys. Um, so I'm going to log off, and I think, uh, Johnny, I'm gonna, you're going to stay on for your uh, meeting. Okay, guys, enjoy. I'll be in tomorrow with William. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? Hold on, hold on one second. Uh,